Thank you so much for joining me. In this video I'm putting my firing systems hat on again to tell you about an updated version of a 1Q firing system that I first reviewed last year. It's the RF Remotech 1Q firing system but the newer version, the Alpha Fire X 9th generation. In my review of the previous version I found a few areas where it was a bit lacking so let's see in this video if there's been any improvements. Before we go any further, just to say, this is not a sponsored video. I bought this system entirely with my own money. There's no affiliate codes or anything like that. So I'm not incentivized to say one way or the other if this unit is good or bad. Okay, so a 1Q firing system, what do you use them for? For back garden displays, the normal approach is to use something like this. This is a 4Q firing system. You can expand on this to get 8Qs, 12Qs and so on. On the shelf behind me is an Ignite system with 18 cues, but there are certain circumstances where you may have a firework that's physically a long distance away from your firing system, or maybe you want to spread some fireworks out across a wider area. That's where the one cue systems can come in handy. These are often referred to as distributed firing systems because rather than having all of your igniter wires coming back to one central point, what you do is you assign one of these to each firework and then you can place them pretty much anywhere without having to run lots of extension wire. Another potential use in a back garden display would be using the one button remote control. If you have a family member or a guest of honor and you want them to start your display, rather than giving them your main remote control with lots of buttons they can accidentally press, by assigning the start firework just to one of these and giving them this, the only thing they can fire is that one firework. So what's changed compared to the previous version? Let's take a closer look. The latest version is on the left here. As you can see, it's a similar concept with one terminal to connect your igniter, a pairing switch and a master on off switch. Flipping around to the back now, and you can possibly spot the main and critical improvement with the newer version, again shown on the left. And there we go with the battery cover off. The new one, as you can see, takes a nine volt battery. This is an improvement over the six volts from the old version, which came from four one and a half volt batteries. Like the previous version, this should only be used with compatible one, four or 12 button remotes. Don't assume if you have a remote that looks similar to these, that it will work. My DB04R remotes, for example, don't pair with this system at all. The easiest way to make sure is when you buy a system is to buy a remote control at the same time. A closer look at the front now and I've angled it so the light's reflecting off it just so you can read the writing a little better. And for the record here's a closer look at the back. Pause this if you need to. Pairing this system with a remote is slightly less fiddly than it was on the old system so let's head over to the test bench now and have a look at that. I have a bulb in place of an igniter here so we can see when it fires. Now let's move the switch from off into the middle position where it says sync and test. The LED goes green to show continuity. That's because we've got a bulb in, which would be the same as having an igniter in. Moving up to arm and the LED will go red to warn you that the system is live. If I bring in a remote control here and press a button, nothing happens as yet because we haven't paired it up. So putting the switch back in the middle position, what we need to do now is press and hold the sync button until the LED flashes. It's hard to see actually on this video clip, but it's, uh, it's flashing gently. Press the button on the remote control you want to pair. And if we move the system to its arm state, you'll see we have liftoff. There we go. If I bring in another remote control now, which is compatible with the system and press buttons, nothing will happen because again, this hasn't been paired. So let me just quickly pair up a button on the four button remote control. So A on this one will fire the bulb now. The other buttons don't do anything. But notice as well, this could be important, is when you go back to the original button, nothing happens because we've knocked that button off by assigning a different button to this unit. 
And if I bring in my DBO4R remote control and try and pair this up, unfortunately, nothing happens at all. They're not compatible. My biggest complaint with the old version was that it could not reliably fire Talon clips. These require a longer pulse than for E-matches and the old system simply didn't activate the cues for long enough. So let's head over to the test bench again and see if there's any changes with this version. The old unit is on the left and the new one is on the right. I've paired them both up to the same button so they'll fire together. As you can see there, the pulse on the newer unit on the right is much longer. Let's just see that again. So you're looking at the bulbs here and how long they light up for. It's worth pointing out that if you keep your button pressed on the remote, the system will still only fire the pulse for the length that you've just seen on the video. This differs from some of the 4Q systems where if you keep your button pressed, the system will fire for as long as you've got your finger down. That's an advantage when it comes to talons because you can basically keep the system firing until something happens. Let's head back over to the test bench now. This is just an experiment pressing the button repeatedly. On the old system there was a built-in delay timer which stopped you firing for another five seconds or so. As you can see with the new system it's a bit more flexible. It does allow you to repeatedly fire the queue. Not that there would be many situations in real life when you'd want to do that. So far so good. So let's head out to the garden for the all important test now. Will it fire a Talon clip-on igniter? No problems there, but just to make doubly sure, let's fire a couple more. So that's five in total. I think that's a pass. Let's now try firing two talons and I'm wiring these in parallel, which is the recommended way to wire these up rather than in series. No problems there. So let's jump up to four talons now, also wired in parallel to see if the system can fire these. No problems there. I didn't try E-matches on this system because if it can fire talons, then it can almost certainly cope with E-matches, which don't require as long a pulse. Now, a few important caveats with this test. The batteries were fresh and at room temperature. The igniters were only 0.5 meter lengths and it was a warm, sunny afternoon. So if you're going to be firing different numbers of igniters at different lengths in different temperatures and so on, I strongly recommend you do a test run first in your specific situation to make sure that everything works. Some conclusions now. I was disappointed with the old version of this because it couldn't reliably fire talons. That problem has been fixed. Nine volts plus a longer pulse meant that this chewed through talons in the tests that you've just seen. So that's good to know. Some prices now, at the time of producing this video in October 2022, a 1Q system with no remote from a UK seller is just under £30. With a one button remote control, you're looking at about £35. A set of four with a four button remote, about £100. And a set of 12 with a 12 button remote, if you had lots of fireworks you want to spread out across a big area, you're looking at about, around about £300. Now, these prices are significantly cheaper if you buy direct from the manufacturer in China. But just a word of warning, that's how I bought this system and delivery times, which I'm assuming are no fault of the supplier themselves once it was in the system. You're talking many, many months of waiting for the system came through. For me personally, that extremely long wait and all the faffing about trying to find out where it was, wasn't worth the saving that I got. So my recommendation would be, unless you really, really are on a tight budget, look at buying this from a UK seller and getting quick delivery. So to finish off then, without a doubt, this is somewhat of a niche system. I think you'll know if you have a use for it. For everybody else, if you're just firing fireworks all in one place, the cheaper and easier options, and certainly ones that require a lot less batteries, would be systems with more than one Q. So the 4Q systems or an Ignite system with 18 Qs. 
Well, I hope you found this video interesting. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.